like to thank the organizer for the invitation. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about, uh, give you a kind of overview on the multifunctional log site for uh, photovoltaics. Of course, uh, as you might see, it's a very, very large, uh, broad uh, title there. Uh, so I will uh, rather focus on uh, some points. Um, and the, uh, the uh, outline of my talk will be the following. I will just give some uh, introduction concerning the oxide for PV, and then I will focus uh, more on the oxide as photon converter, especially uh, uh, rare earth uh, materials, uh, doped uh, TCOs. And uh, we'll move to oxide as photon absorbers um, and uh, some uh, conclusions. So um, uh, this picture actually is uh, somehow uh, summarizing uh, all kind of applications of uh, oxide materials for different applications, uh, going from uh, um, from uh, electronics, memory, magnetic, photonics, energy, and health. So you find that in a this kind of uh, of uh, of uh, 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 surrounding um, uh, applications right here. Uh, and then uh, be, 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 uh, such kind of properties can also be used for uh, several applications and we'll focus here mainly on photovoltaics, sorry. Um, more particularly, uh, the oxide for photovoltaics, you can find it in uh, several uh, um, type of, uh, of uh, devices. So. Uh, it starts with um, very, um, in silicon for instance, you find uh, silicon oxide as a uh, oxide, uh, very important for uh, passivation. And then you, f you find it uh, in, in different other uh, devices, mainly uh, as a, a TCO, as uh, we will see uh, later, either zinc oxide, ITO, FTO, T TIO2, in a lot of different applications. For instance, uh, for the perovskite we just heard, we have uh, uh, the FTO as a CTO, as well as a T TIO2. So we have plenty of uh, oxide materials used for photovoltaics, and this is very important for the, uh, uh, a very important material for the rest. So if we focus now on the TCO as a such, uh, again, TCO can be found in uh, several uh, devices, uh, from uh, uh, silicon heat structure to organics, uh, and as I said before, this is the kind of TCOs you can find. And what we would like, uh, what we are uh, working on since some time now, is uh, to functionalize such kind of TCO by adding some lontanides uh, and trying to keep the transparency, the conduction, and um, uh, getting a UV a photon conversion uh, in order to improve the efficiency. So there's plenty of uh, rare earth materials that can help in, in doing such kind of, uh, of phenomena. So going from erbium to uh, samarium, so there's plenty of those, but they are not all compatible with uh, what we want to, to do. So let's focus a bit more on what, uh, why first we do that. Uh, this is a slide just reminding you why uh, it uh, might be interesting to use TCO. Anyway, as I said uh, before, TCO is already used as an uh, 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 important material for the uh, devices. And the point uh, for this, uh, the use of uh, uh, combi combining um, rare earth and the TCO is uh, to convert one part of the UV light uh, into a visible uh, or near infrared light uh, to get to get it better uh, to increase the efficiency of the cell behind. So this can be done through the down conversion process or the downshifting process. So uh, combining again the rare air doped TCOs uh, with the um, can can be a, a good a good way to make a down conversion or a downshifting. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, now if as I say, just um, if you combine, uh, if we, we combine the uh, uh, properties of the uh, TCO, which is able to absorb uh, UV light and convert it into, uh, um, and, and transfer this uh, energy uh, to the rare earth, then uh, through the transitions, uh, thanks to the different levels of the uh, um, discrete levels, energy levels we have for the lontanites, this can uh, emit uh, um, uh, infrared, uh, visible or infrared light that can be of interest. And uh, as a matter, again, of fact, you can see here uh, the gain that we are expecting if you don't have this DC, uh, this D downshifting, and if you have the downshifting. So this is something we are looking for. So, but the question I said is, what kind of rare earth we, we should use for that? So there are some rare earth. Uh, this, uh, the, uh, sorry to say, I'm confusing two 
buttons. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, you see, this is the uh, DIC, um, uh, di diagram giving uh, the allergy levels for plenty of different uh, rare earth materials here. So uh, those who are here, they're too high for the um, uh, uh, solar spectrum, so uh, because of the energy, it's just ex extremely high. Now, uh, those are very, um, they, those, these the energy levels are very competing with the matrix, or uh, matrix, it means the TCO as a such. And uh, what we have to, to look for is rare earth which are fitting uh, with the uh, silicon or CIG, CIGS band gap uh, and the, where the level somehow is, uh, is uh, able to fit with this, um, with this uh, uh, moderated electron um, energy levels. So with what kind of, um, of uh, rare earths we can find there? So uh, those uh, rare earths are neodymium, ytterbium, praseodymium. Uh, uh, terbium, samarium, and uh, we have focused on zinc oxide and tin oxide as a, as a matrix. So now coming to the uh, part of the experimental uh, uh, side, uh, this is um, uh, uh, the, we, we have used um, different uh, means. This is the uh, uh, sputtering uh, system we have uh, used where uh, the uh, uh, sputtering uh, ca um, target made of uh, Zinc, for instance, uh, uh, we are uh, adding uh, species of uh, rare element in order to have evaporation of our material under oxygen, of course, and uh, as well as the uh, uh, rare earth elements. And you might see here that we have uh, a very good quality in terms of uh, 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 crystallinity of the zinc oxide doped with ytterbium in this case, uh, with uh, 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 this amount of, of ytterbium in it. Um, and also uh, a strong insertion, you, you might not see it here, but uh, with the, uh, the, the additional analysis, we're able to, to, to see that the ytterbium is really uh, uh, in, inserted in the, uh, iter, in the zinc oxide with a very good um, um, uh, high amount. And this is exactly what we are looking for. Uh, to focus on the uh, energy transfer as a such, uh, you can, uh, this is the uh, PPL as well as the PLE. I mean, it means the uh, photoluminescence excitation uh, study. And you see that the uh, absorption as well as the, uh, uh, the uh, emission of the uh, uh, zinc oxide are, uh, uh, of the ytterbium are quite uh, 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 matching. And what's uh, very important is after the excitation of the zinc oxide, um, we, we, we got emission uh, in here in the uh, near infrared of the ytterbium. And this is coming simply by uh, this transition, which is, uh, again, uh, the uh, excitation and then the uh, disexcitation. This energy is transferred to the ytterbium, and the ytterbium is emitting the, uh, uh, the, this, uh, in this uh, range. So this is uh, exactly what we are looking for. Uh, it means that uh, we have energy transfer from zinc oxide to the ytterbium, and that then the downshifting is possible. We did apply that uh, not only for zinc oxide doped with uh, ytterbium, but also with uh, neodymium, like you can see here. What is interesting with the neodymium is the, uh, the, we, we got a much, much more broader uh, PL response, uh, as you might see here, really ranging from uh, uh, 870 uh, down to 975. And again, it's the same story. We were able, uh, thanks to this experiment, to really even um, um, analyze and having a, a clear view of the different levels uh, that are involved in such process. Again, excitation of the zinc oxide and this excitation uh, of the, um, the uh, uh, neodymium, uh, thanks to the, the different energy levels we have here, one, two, three, four, five. We are moving now from zinc oxide to tin oxide doped with uh, neodymium the, uh, uh, to, to compare to zinc oxide. And um, again, we were able to uh, got uh, quite good quality of crystalline thin films. Uh, what is interesting with this system is that we were playing with the ratio of argon and oxygen from let's say two to 3.5, we're able to make, to, to make tin, tin oxide as well as, I mean, SNO, as well as SNO2. And um, this is uh, very important uh, uh, for some applications because SNO is a P-type, uh, while the SNO2 is an N-type. So for some applications, it might uh, be very interesting. Uh, so simply by tuning the argon to oxygen uh, um, uh, flow. 
And uh, um, also, uh, one what is also demonstrating that we have SNO2 and SNO is looking to the uh, um, bend to the absorption, and uh, uh, the band gap, of course, is of SNO, it's SNO2 is so different that uh, you, the, it's clearly we are um, uh, we have prepared the two kind of material. What is uh, uh, can be noticed here is that we have also good transparency in this part as as well. And, um, uh, and, and, and the um, UV visible measurements also uh, show uh, this uh, change, as I said before. Now, uh, again, we are interested on the uh, optical side. And this is uh, showing, again, the photoluminescence after excitation in the UV range. Uh, we were able to generate a uh, photon, photon in the, um, um, in the uh, near infrared. Uh, again, thanks to the disexcitation uh, of, of the uh, neodymium at different le levels uh, here, from uh, top levels to the uh, um, to the uh, uh, base la baseline levels. So, this uh, such kind of studies are showing that we have uh, neodymium, which is well inserted in the tin oxide, and uh, uh, thanks to the uh, ND3 uh, ions, we were able to uh, to uh, convert directly. Uh, uh, UV photons into uh, into infrared. Uh, to to get a better view on that, so we have uh, made a better PL on that, and you see that we we um, uh, we were able to uh, split the large uh, PL here into uh, different levels, which is somehow translated in this uh, uh, draw. It's in in this drawing right there. So SNO2 again, uh, which is uh, um, which is uh, doped with neodymium is really adapted to uh, for UV conver photon conversion for that. So we have applied that to uh, uh, silicon solar cells, and uh, we did see uh, the uh, uh, downshifting we were looking for. This is without and uh, uh, neodymium doped uh, zinc oxide, and this is uh, uh, neodymium doped uh, tin oxide, and you can see that there is an improvement in the uh, UV region as uh, we were expecting. So we have somehow. Um, uh, uh, reached part of our goal. We also applied that to CIGS material, and uh, we did see that uh, the tin oxide uh, doped uh, uh, with neodymium is uh, uh, really getting, um, improving the efficiency uh, by a factor of point, uh, point 0.8, which is uh, absolute, which is uh, uh, quite good results when you're looking for improvement without changing that much. It's just changing the TCO uh, and dope it with some, uh, some rare earth. So, as a summary for this part, uh, we have uh, demonstrated that the terbium and neodymium uh, um, uh, are able to are optically active in terms of uh, ions, of course, and give rise to a, a high uh, photoluminescence. And thanks to this study, we were able to really um, determine the uh, energy diagram uh, of terbium and neodymium, which has not been done uh, in the past. So, and we have applied that to different solar cells. Now I'm moving to the second part of my talk, uh, which concerns the absorber uh, um, oxide for uh, PV. Uh, what we are looking for is oxides which, are, uh, uh, which have band gap in this range where the efficiency is the highest. So uh, we have all these materials, but we are looking for oxides which are um, somehow fitting with the requirements in terms of band gap. What we are looking for also is uh, uh, oxide that are composed of abundance uh, of, of elements, uh, like, uh, of course, uh, silicon, we can forget about, iron, copper, zinc, uh, magnesium, and, 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 and others. So uh, these two uh, requirements should be um, the goal if you want to go to oxides. So now uh, there are some uh, sketches here concerning all oxide photovoltaics. It means that the, the whole structure is somehow made with oxide. You have here, for instance, uh, uh, zinc oxide with uh, uh, copper oxide. You have here the uh, BFCO, uh, bulk photovoltaic cell, uh, BFO, uh, TiO2 with, uh, with, sil with silver cell. So uh, all oxide PV for low cost uh, uh, raw material are really a good option. Uh, for the for the future and for cheap solar, uh, solar cells. So what is the reality now? Um, if you go to the look to the uh, um, uh, copper oxide, which has been thoroughly studied actually, uh, this is uh, giving the efficiency versus years, and see that the efficiency is somehow uh, limited since uh, some some years now, and the bottlenecks are uh, the uh, 
band gap, which is quite high to AV, and the formation of some uh, uh, CO2 uh, at the surfaces, which is limiting the, the processes as such. Uh, as I said, it's a very simple material, but there are some bottlenecks to, to cover. Now, if we move to the, uh, look to more carefully to the new uh, kind of oxides, uh, multiferroic perovskite ferroic, uh, ferroic oxides, uh, are there interesting for PV. Uh, this is uh, showing the uh, solar efficiency versus year uh, for the uh, hybrid perovskite you just heard about uh, this morning and this afternoon. And this is the new uh, kind of inorganic ferroelectric uh, photovoltaic that we are interested on. And you see that the, 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 it's, 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 it's starting somehow in the same shape. And I think it's quite interesting to look to this material more carefully. Why that is simply because uh, these materials, they have these properties of, uh, of uh, ferro ferroelectricity and domains, and this might uh, be very helpful. Uh, at least theoretically speaking, it has been shown that uh, if uh, you are in parallel or perpendicular uh, structure, uh, you might get a very high uh, uh, voltage, uh, open circuit voltage, uh, up to 10, 10 volts uh, here, uh, uh, eight, 8 to 10 volts, which is much uh, quite high and much higher than the band gap of the material. So this is what we call the bulk uh, photovoltaic effect, which is uh, quite interesting. I don't have time to, to, look, to, to uh, speak about. Uh, what is, uh, can be just understood uh, very briefly is that we have the domains in our ferroelectric materials, and then the, uh, you, 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 we are adding the voltages which are uh, um, generated in the different domains, and you might end up with a uh, higher voltage than, uh, than normal. So this uh, inorganic photovoltaics compared to the hybrid one have of course uh, also some uh, advantages but also disadvantages. Uh, stability is much, of course, it's inorganic, so uh, it's uh, quite promising from this side and no toxicity, we we're talking about lead. So there are some advantages and it's uh, worth to, to look for, it, for them. So from the uh, material point of view, there are plenty of oxides which have been uh, at least tried uh, as, a, as a absorbers. Uh, some of them have, uh, that are difficult to make, but some others have some drawbacks. Uh, what is uh, plotted here and uh, shown here is some of them with the band gap that can be uh, either obtained or, or aimed to. And, um, and this is some references of people who have worked on. But uh, you see that there are some materials with the good band gap uh, that can fit with the material, with the hour tail. So among them, you have the, what we call the BFO, BMO, T, TBO, or um, lanthanum um, uh, vanadium oxides. Um, you see, this is a bulk, this is a real uh, bulk uh, effect where uh, the BFO has been used uh, for photovoltaic effect and uh, you, you might see that uh, 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 voltage uh, much higher than the band gap of about 8, eight volt has been uh, 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 reached uh, on, on such kind of structure. So from the, the demonstration point of view uh, that this material can be interesting, uh, it has been done. Um, another material compared to the BFO is uh, K KBFO, and you see that the, uh, sometimes the, uh, mm, uh, I mean, with, with controlling the material, the band gap can even be uh, better. So this is the BFO, this is the uh, KBFO, BFO. and uh, you see that the, uh, again uh, for such kind of material, uh, VOC about eight volts has been uh, obtained um, on bulk material again, bulk. Uh, when it comes to thin films, it's a bit more complicated. This is why we are uh, working on that, uh, the, the, the whole group. So this is an example of B BFCO made by uh, pulsed laser deposition at certain uh, frequency. And uh, you might see that the structure is, uh, is, is quite good uh, so far. And uh, interestingly, the uh, optical uh, absorption is, is much higher than silicon. So this is uh, a very interesting uh, point because then we need very thin uh, films to go for it. And the band gap, uh, it's in the range of 1.1 to 1.5 electron volts, so depending on the composition, temperature, and plenty of other parameters. When it comes to uh, photovoltaic, there is still some, uh, the uh, photovoltaic effect has been uh, 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 seen, but still there's a need of uh, improvement of layer quality and carrier extractions. So there's still a lot of work to, 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 to be done there, but at least uh, the demonstration, first demonstrations uh, started. Actually, this is uh, only one, one layer here. If you want to, to, um, to be more efficient, uh, it's also interesting to make uh, tandem cells. Uh, each frequency here is giving a material with a different band gap, 
So you can tune the band gap from 2.1 to 1.5, and uh, the, uh, these people have ended with something like 8%, uh, which is the first record uh, in 10 films so far, and they, uh, they have just announced 10% in 2016. Another interesting material is the BMO, uh, also by PLD, so we did some work on that uh, already. And again, the crystallinity is uh, the structure, actually. Is, uh, composition is, uh, is quite good. Uh, the optical absorption is also high, and the band gap is in, uh, arranging in the, uh, um, exactly in the part where, where we are looking for. And uh, when it comes to the, uh, like, like it's shown here, and um, for the photovoltaic effect, the first demonstration is, is done now. So it's a promising material. We'd like to continue on this as well. Uh, another interesting, very interesting material actually is the uh, TBTMO, uh, but only in the hexagonal uh, 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 shape, not, not in, uh, in other shapes. So this is what we are uh, aiming to. And what is interesting is you can see here the maximum efficiency expected theoretically compared to CDT, for instance, is, is, is even uh, higher for, for this one compared to BTO, for instance, or CDTO. Uh, and this is also due to the uh, high absorption. Uh, this material is, my, is highly absorbing a huge part of the uh, uh, solar spectrum. So this is a quite interesting material. The problem is that to get it uh, hexagonal, um, you see the, uh, this uh, material, uh, it, it has different uh, um, crystalline uh, shape. And if you wanted to have it hexagonal and ferroelectric at the same time, so you have to dope it with this element. And this is what you are uh, dealing with. So we have to dope it, for instance, with ytterbium. And if we dope it with ytterbium, then we get uh, hexagonal and ferroelectric material. And this is uh, start to be interesting for the solar cell application as such. OK, um, there's another set of uh, oxides which are of interest, are what we call the um, MOT insulators. Um, this motor insulators is uh, somehow based on uh, uh, Y, M, and ox um, oxygen. So this is the composition of the uh, such kind of insulators. And um, particularly if you uh, use the um, uh, lanthanum and um, vanadium, uh, you end up with a material which is here with a quite interesting band gap, uh, which can even be uh, tuned. Uh, so um, in LAVO3, it's a interesting material, uh, not only because of the band gap, but also because of the, um, of the absorption which is uh, fitting with the uh, spectral response. Um, okay, we have made, uh, sorry, uh, we have made uh, uh, this uh, material with dif different techniques, sputtering, sol gel, PLD, and we have demonstrated the absorption is, uh, is quite high. Um, and the efficiency expected is in the range of um, uh, 8 to 10 percent with this material without any um, uh, sophisticated things. So um, with that, I'm uh, um, finishing my talk. So what I uh, uh, tried to show you in very general way, we didn't go uh, deeper in different parts, is that the um, uh, rare earths combined with the uh, TCO's materials uh, it's able to reduce the carrier thermization uh, in the material via the photon conversion, and we demonstrated that for this uh, um, tin oxide doped with aluminum or tin oxide doped with uh, ytterbium, for instance. Um, and then uh, the second part concerned the inorganic oxides, uh, which are not that much uh, um, uh, explored so far as absorbers. So we have many materials and the high efficiency uh, are, are expected in the coming years. So the control of the structure, optical and electrical uh, properties are of interest. With that, I would like to acknowledge all the colleagues uh, from my lab and the uh, EPCMS lab with, uh, uh, and uh, the, the other partners, as well as the, some work with the University of Yunnan and the funding of a European project and a national project. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot. Thank you.